What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Retro Aviation. Hope you're having a fantastic day today. Aviation news for you all. American Airlines places orders for brand new Airbus A321neos, Boeing 737 MAX 10s, and more Ember ERJ 175s. And we're going to break this all down for you today. And I really hope that you're excited for this. So, without any further delay, let's go ahead and get started. Over the last few days, we've had some rumors that American Airlines may be in the market for some new aircraft as they have some aging aircraft and also some replacements coming up. And as such, today on Monday, March 4th, 2024, we got a major announcement uh, encompassing over, I think, like like 250 aircraft, it is a massive order. So let's just go ahead and get started with this official article from American Airlines as they'll be placing orders for Airbus, Boeing, and Embraer aircraft. So definitely a nice distribution there. So American Airlines will be adding aircraft, uh, 85 Airbus A321neos, 85 Boeing 737 MAX 10s, and 90 Embraer ERJ-175. The purpose of this order is to enable American Airlines to upgauge aircraft on domestic and short haul international routes, and also offer more premium seats than any other US airline. American Airlines also expects to remain within its previous announced guidelines for capabilities and uh, capital, I'm going to botch this word probably, I'm sorry, expenditures. Uh, intrusive of aircraft orders in with growing com, uh, customer demand for premium travel experience. American will retrofit its Airbus A319s and Airbus A320s beginning in 2025. That's exciting, increasing a number of domestic first class seats on each aircraft. And narrow body orders will complement existing orders for the Boeing 787-9 and Airbus A321 XLR. So that was a really hefty amount of news right there. So let me get a zoomed in here so we can get a really good look at this text that we'll read through. So uh, my initial impressions of this is is this was certainly due up because American Airlines, as we know, has only had orders recently for the 77-9 Airbus A321 uh, XLR following their deliveries of all their 737 Maxes, Airbus E321neos, and Boeing 77-8s uh, getting close uh, to coming to a close. So it was bound that American Airlines was going to have to order some new aircraft at some point. So this is what they decided to go with, which was kind of surprising to me. So in Fort Worth, American announced the order for 260 brand new airplanes, 85 A321neos, 85 737-MAX 10s, and 90 ERJ 175s. They have uh, rights and options to purchase an additional 193 aircraft, which is incredible. So that's really cool. And 30 of the existing 737 MAX 8 orders were upgaded to the 737 MAX 10. So again, the intent here is to enhance the American Airlines premium seating selection. So that's going to be really excited. And Robert Islam, American Airlines CEO, said, over the past decade, we have invested heavily to modernize and simplify our fleet, which is the largest and youngest among the U.S. network carriers. These orders will continue to fuel our fleet for newer, more efficient aircraft so we can deliver to the best network and record setting operations reliability for our customers. And since uh, 2014, American has took on many aircraft deliveries, including 600 mainline airplanes and 440 on order as we speak. So this is really awesome here. And uh, American Airlines Chief Financial Officer Devin May said he's very excited with the partnerships with Airbus, Boeing, and Embraer. So that's really cool. So then we are going to get into some information here about the narrow body fleet growth, which is really impressive. So, of course, over time, the 737 MAX 8 and Airbus E321neo have been delivered to American with brand new aircraft. But it hasn't just been brand new aircraft that American Airlines has been adding into their fleet. Over time, they've also added secondhand aircraft to their fleet, such as the former Frontier Airbus E319s. They added a handful of those a, a few years ago and most recently they added all the retired alaska airlines airbus e321 neos so you can see here where we get into some really good detail and you're welcome to read on this the detail with how important the airbus e320 family aircraft is particularly here the e321 neo that will be a really important piece and i'm sure it's going to talk here about the 737 max 10 so here it is right here uh, so the 737 MAX 10 will be the newest aircraft type to the American Airlines fleet, as you can see here, following the Airbus A321 XLR. So it's going to be really cool to see American Airlines get 737 MAX 10s. Delta and United have a substantial order for these aircraft too, so American certainly getting in on the action here. But the 737 MAX 10 will certainly, uh, once it's certified, of course, be a huge asset for American Airlines for various routes. So you could kind of think of it like a 757-300, if you will, if that kind of, that, uh, that, uh, vision makes sense. So American Airlines, we can certainly see them using this aircraft type on routes that the 737-300 flew for other carriers, for example. So it would not surprise me to see the 737 MAX 10s deployed on routes like, I don't know, Philadelphia to Lisbon or, you know, flights like that, that have that range to where it makes sense to have like 175, 200 people on it. But at the same time, you know, probably doesn't demand a Boeing 787 or equivalent. So this is a really good hybrid for American. I think the A321 XLR, of course, is going to have a 
particular mission with that very long range. And we've seen what Americans already done with the Airbus A321neo so far, mainly deploying it on longer US domestic flights and other such routes. So the MAX 10 is gonna be really important to supplement the Boeing 737 MAX 8, which is flying a really solid handful of domestic routes and obviously routes from Miami to the Caribbean. So I really feel like the possibilities are endless with the Boeing 737 MAX 10. And you can see here, uh, they very much appreciate the uh, American Airlines' trust with 737 MAX, which is really exciting, and I'm really eager to see that. So overall, for the mainline fleet, this is absolutely huge. I'm honestly kind of surprised that it came so soon, but at some point, it was bound to happen that the 757 uh, wasn't going to get replaced by the MAX 8 and so on and so forth. So this, I would say, is really the true 757, 200, and 767, 300 replacements from the previous situations a few years ago. And then as for the regional fleet, this is a really big surprise. Definitely my biggest surprise as of late that they already are going to go ahead and do this. So American Airlines is interested in bringing more aircraft into their fleet. As we all know, they have ERJ-145s and CRJ-200s, which are 50-seat singles-class regional jets that are planned to be retired soon. And what was American going to do? And it looks like they're going to make all these routes uh, onto the ERJ-175. So they ordered an additional 90 aircraft. I think they already have a good handful. I'm sure it's going to stay somewhere on here. But with premium seating, high-speed wi satellite Wi-Fi, and NC power, this is expected to make the competition the ERJ-175 uh, the completion very good so you can see here where it talks about how important the ERJ-175 is as a true backbone at this point with the fuel efficiency and also just the representation in general so that's really exciting to see right there so this is really ex 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 uh, surprising but there really wasn't any other option so Americans gonna have to rock the 76 seat aircraft on routes like you know uh, let me think of one like uh, Boston, Syracuse, for example. That was the most recent time I saw an ERJ-145. And, you know, the 145 is a really powerful asset. And it's going to be really interesting to see American Airlines replace it with 26 more seats per route. Uh, other really good examples include all the markets out of Chicago that they replaced the ERJ-145 on for the CRJ-200. So we could look at like Chicago to Oshkosh, Chicago to Milwaukee. But the good news about this is most of those markets have been trending really well with American Airlines load factors on these smaller aircraft types. So I do think that American Airlines will be able to find a balance between supplementing the ERJ-175 with frequencies, if that makes sense. So not overflying it. So we might see perhaps one less frequency per city, if that makes sense. But as the byproduct of that, we will see nicer aircraft and also uh, good load factors for Americans. So there is a chance we'll lose some frequencies here, but at the same time, we'll just have to see what happens. So it'll be very interesting to see this too. Also, this could possibly induce the CRG-700 that they have with their SkyWest partnership. That could be become more uh, present at Chicago. They already use it on several routes out of Phoenix and Los Angeles. Angeles. However, I wouldn't be surprised if some of these 175s are deployed at those West Coast operations because they could justify some of those routes are only operated once a day, such as Tulsa and some others. So perhaps they could justify a few more seats there. And for some of the more essential services that are going to have a few less passengers, such as like, you know, your Oshkoshes, your Green Bays and routes like that, uh, uh, Springfield, you know, some of those, perhaps that can make more sense to deploy the CRJ 700s on. So we'll see. There is also no information right now about what specific these will be took on by i'm sure quite a few of them will most likely be envoy but we'll probably get more information about that in the future so that's really exciting american airlines also made a really big announcement enhancing its existing aircraft which is really exciting right here so you can see that american airlines will be retrofitting the airbus a319 a320s beginning next year in 2025 so it's going to have power at every seat larger overhead bins and new seats with updated trim and finish so unfortunately no info entertainment will be deployed on these existing aircraft as they're trying to keep continuity which we've talked about this many times i don't think it was the best decision for american to strip out perfectly good inflator entertainment among their fleet but what can you do about it at least they're going to give it a little bit better of a experience as those aircraft are really dated and it appears that american is dedicated to flying them as you could tell this was more of a uh, uh what's the phrasing i'm looking for um longer domestic route and shorter shorter international route expansion plus obviously the regional side of this too so american to supplement the normal domestic operation will update their you could argue their worst product, I guess, but I mean, there's certainly uh, subjective arguments to that. So I think that's a really positive change for American Airlines. I think that'll help to have better seats in there and having uh, the larger overhead bins along with the new trim and the power should be a quality addition, even though it isn't gonna be in flight entertainment, it should still make for a nice aircraft for American Airlines to deploy. So looking forward to that. And it's gonna be uh, growing by more than 20% on their premium seating in 2026. So this will be really cool. And American Airlines certainly making massive moves here. So I'm really 
really excited to see how all this is going to go really surprising with the 737 max 10 i'm really looking forward to that uh, we'll see when that's going to happen of course, as I said earlier, Delta and United both have orders for the aircraft type two. So we're really not making much uh, movement until that aircraft does get certified, which I'm sure it will at some point. And I think it makes sense for American long term because they are going to have to compete with Delta and United on that aircraft type and obviously the capabilities that it has. Like, for instance, I'm sure United's going to absolutely go crazy deploying the Max 10 out of cities like Denver and flying that to Europe and vice versa for obviously, you know, even a city like Washington Dulles and flying some longer offerings out of there on that aircraft type. So you know, that's a whole speculation. We could really get into some details on that. But American, you know, this is going to be a huge asset for airports like Dallas and Chicago, you know, flying to an airport like, I don't know, maybe like a Stockholm or someplace like that, that, you know, it's not going to be a 77 route, of course, but they still want to serve it. So this could be a huge asset. And even the use out of cities like Philadelphia, Charlotte too, you know, Miami, there's so many capabilities and ordering what was it, 85 of these. Yeah. 85 of these is going to be huge for American. And I think they're finally going to get back to what the 757 was doing with that aircraft so that will be their best option there and honestly it does look pretty good so it'll be weird not seeing american having the max nine but what can we do so it's certainly going to be exciting and i'm really looking forward to seeing what the future is going to hold for american airlines and i really hope that you enjoyed this aviation news video i'm also about to make a video regarding the spirit jet blue merger uh getting shut down so stay on the lookout for that video too and if you're enjoying these aviation news videos please uh, leave a like and consider subscribing i would greatly appreciate it and i'm looking forward to more aviation news coverage here in the near future so with all that being said everybody that'll do it for today's video thank you all so much for watching one thank each and every one of you for watching my name is Shredder of aviation take it easy everybody stay safe just process do what you love and love you do. My name is Dredger of Aviation. I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all soon as Dredger of Aviation is signing off.